Red Swan. They were my heroes. Master Sergeant Mack, Kenneth, and Corporal Palmer Charles II. After I was injured, I was sent to San uh, I was sent to Germany and then San Antonio. And I spent six and a half years there during my recovery time. I met so many so many friends. During that time I had over 138 surgeries, if I'm not mistaken. Surgeries and surgeries. Sometimes surgeries every week, once every week or twice every week at one time. I lost my right arm, my left hand was really damaged. When I was burning, I was making a fist. So my, my left hand was basically like a rock. And I had so many surgeries. And at one point, I thought, I told myself, who's going to love me from now on? I thought I was going to be alone for the rest of my life. Until one day, I was, I was really sad, I was really struggling. And I, I met one of my friends, a lady, a volunteer in the hospital, that told me that my life was going to, to be a blessing from now on. I thought she was crazy. You know, I was, that time I had burns all over my body. I, I had staples all over my face. Uh, and I was in a really bad shape. But later on, I, I met so many good friends who changed my life forever. One of them was one guy that, that time he, he was injured also in Iraq and he didn't have any of his limbs. No arms, no legs, nothing. And I was complaining that day, being so painful. One thing that he changed, one thing that he made me realize is that I was lucky. Because I, I, at least I was, I was able to walk. And, I, and one, at one point, I was going to be able to do a lot of things by myself. That's the day that my life was changed forever also. And the second time was when I met my wife. I met her after my injuries. And she saw the man that I was inside, not the man outside. And then I was blessed because I, I had a beautiful son. That day I told my wife, it better be a boy because I'm going to name him after my two friends. And that's what I did. When he was born, I named him Kenneth Charles in memory of my two friends. And then I got another blessing. He was born a day before my retirement. So it was another blessing. But then I went back home. I'm from Maryland. I went back home and that time... Uh, I thought I was going back home, but later I realized that I wasn't home anymore. Why? Because a lot of my friends, a lot of people there weren't used to see people, winning guys like me. And I was really suffering. I was really suffering, not because for my, myself, but that time I had my wife and my son. It was really hard to go outside and my wife holding my hand so hard, basically telling me that everything was going to be okay. I was really strong. I was getting counseling and going to my appointments and surgeries and was really painful. Until one day I got a call from Tunnels of Towers, our brains that work. And they told me that they could help me. That they can can give me a, a, a second chance also to, to be myself, to do a lot of things by myself. And that was another blessing that I had. Today I speak on behalf of my friends, of my brothers and sisters. There's double amputees, triple amputees. They need your help because they want to be independent also. With your help, you guys are changing many people's life out there that you don't even know. Go to ourbraves.org 
and you will see the difference that you're making. Thank you so much, everyone. And I encourage you to, for next year, tell this to your neighbors, friends, brothers, sisters. Tell them about this great foundation. Hopefully I'll see you next year and make this run bigger and bigger this next year and the following year. Thank you so much and God bless you. build these homes, goes to help build these technologically advanced homes that will allow our critically injured <laughs> members of the military, double and triple amputees, to be able to live in independence and live in a way that's comfortable with the touch of a button from an iPad. Can you believe that? With the touch of a button, they can raise the stove, lower glasses from the cabinets, and you all running today are helping to build for America's bravest. So right now I'm gonna ask that Major Bill Drew come and join me on stage as our runners are getting ready to participate in what we all have come out here for today. And that's to run and walk. I would be walking, by the way, <laughs> if I was with y'all. I'd be walking the 5K. And so, Major Drew is going to help to send off our military. Thank you, Mimi. Okay, just uh, real quick. Um, I was asked a couple times in the previous weeks, and I was actually asked one time this morning, you know, ISIS is in the news and all that, and it's, you know, I hate them and this, that, and the other. It's, it's these folks over here to your, your right, and I'll talk about them in a minute, both the Army and the Air Force here. It's, it's not that we hate who or what is in front of us, it's that we love who and what is behind us. And that's an important thing to know uh, for all of you. So as you get emotionally charged on a, thank you, thank you. As you get emotionally charged, you need to think about that's the intent, that's why we do what we do. Um, I also said that today, I know uh, we have a couple hundred folks out there, and that's fantastic. And I put out that I'm not walking for these heroes, I'm walking with them, and that's true. And I was over here rubbing you know, Christians, or he's over here with mommy now, Christian's head and, and just loving on him. I was thinking, I was looking over here at the North Carolina State University Air Force ROTC, and I was thinking, these are future officers in some form or fashion, they're taking care of my little boy. And for those of you who are parents out there, I know you know with great clarity what I'm talking about, if you have a brother or sister. Also over here to your right, uh, our various National Guard Reserve units, they're gonna be uh, walking with their rucksacks, carrying a, a little bit of weight. But it's all these first responders, it's all the people that are currently serving, but more importantly at this point, because we're all getting a little bit older, and September 11th is getting a little bit more distant, it's about keeping that memory alive, and there's a reason for that. And as I reached out to some of my, my friends, they said, oh, you know, well, why are you guys doing it a little after, you know, beyond September 11th? And gee whiz, there's 15 other runs in the greater Raleigh area this weekend, and gosh, it's a Sunday morning. I understand all that, and uh, while I do, I'm investing in this future. We have the present here, we're talking about the past, but I'm investing in these future officers. Um, I say this because uh, there's a gra there's a sense of gravity and it's, it's solemn and somber, but we're all here and we're standing tall and we're getting ready to run. And I want you to think about that and marinate on it while you run. Now I, got, I see some folks out there starting to do their stretches, that's good. That's good, because those are the guys that are going to be looking at their watches breaking land speed records. <laughs> and, I, and I think that's great, too. So at this time, I'd like uh, the military to go ahead and posture up at the, uh, at the start line. So uh, remember the cadet, uh, cadet charge over here, if you could kind of just make their way over there. And as we do that, let's give them a round of applause and the honor guard that did a fabulous presentation of the colors today. Wesley Eagle, you guys go ahead and follow behind them. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. We're truly grateful. Thank you, Major Drew. And now I have the responsibility of assembling our first responders. So our military is going to get into place for the race, and now 